Hello, my name is Jen and welcome to the Book Refuge. Today, my loves, we have quite the book haul to get through. Um, I let this kind of get away from me and as you know, I tend to stack up the books mighty quickly. In fact, some of the ones in this haul, you've already seen them in my wrap up from last month because I got them near the end of the month and I didn't have enough to do another book haul, but I'd already read them because I read them as soon as I bought them. So I'm going to start with the books that you've like already seen if you've watched one of my other videos. And then I have some thrift store finds. I have some finds that are older but new to me. And then I have some that were just random like I actually bought some contemporary this month um, I've been slowly um, getting back into those and I've been having some success I found some that I liked so anyway let me just dive in this video is gonna be ridiculously long already loves because I have so many books but here we go again I'm gonna start with the ones I've already mentioned because I can just rip through them um, that is the Illuminae files all I bought these at the end of last month read all of them already um, loved them, talked about them in my wrap up. I'm planning to do, um, a more, um, detailed series review of these because I love them and they're on my all time favorite. I'm listening to them on audible right now because these are an experience that you need to read and listen to. I will explain that more in depth there, but these were already in a wrap up. <laughs> That's why I needed to do this book haul. <laughs> then another one that was already in my book haul, or I mean, was in my uh, TBR is God's Grave um, because I actually just finished, finished Never Night, um, which was on my TBR for July. And um, of course I bought the next one, which um, I'm taking a little bit of a break because these are adult dark fantasy and they're very intense and I needed to read something light and fluffy in between them to keep my soul alive. So, but first off is, this is my all crate book of the month from Twinkle with Love. Haven't read this one yet. Um, it's not on my TBR currently, but it is in my book haul because I just got it. Um, this doesn't really seem like a book I'm going to like, but I'm going to give it a try. I've been giving all the all crate books a try because, you know, they get sent to me in my crate and I want to give them the best chance ever. Um, but this is generally the kind of contemporary that isn't my thing, but it's beautiful. The story seems fun. So maybe it'll be one of the little fluff pieces I read in between some of these very heavy fantasy that you're about to see. <laughs> Then um, another one I got is Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett. This is a cute little contemporary about these two friends who in the last like six to 12 months, they have stopped talking to each other, um, a guy and a girl, and they both end up on this camping trip together through mutual friends. And they set about trying to work through their differences and finding out what happened in their friendship that made them split up and if there's any way that they can save it. And <clears throat> again, like this is one of the books that is like encouraging me to try more contemporary because it was so pretty and it was kind of a desperate buy. So I was like, well, it's pretty looking. I like the idea of camping. Um, not a huge fan of two friends who don't talk anymore. Like I think that's a really cliche thing. And a lot of times the reasons why they don't talk anymore, like isn't good enough to me. But um, this author, there was a legit reason why they weren't talking anymore. And there was a legit way that they worked through it, right? I when it's a contemporary romance, uh, contemporary young adult, I want it to be as grounded in reality as possible. Because otherwise, it just gets unbelievable and is kind of annoying for me. The next contemporary one that I bought is Thief of Happy Endings by Kristen Chandler. Um, this one I also have finished already <laughs> and um, I'm not gonna go into what I gave it cause that's for a wrap up video. Um, but this was really interesting. Um, it has to do with this girl who her parents are getting a divorce. She's the oldest of four kids and she's been going through some stuff so her parents send her to a ranch for troubled kids for the summer and um they the what they're doing on this ranch is they're taking in mustangs and um, getting them ready to be sold so they're taking the wild mustangs in wyoming and trying to tame them enough that they can go to a good home because otherwise the authorities in that area 
are rounding up the animals and not treating them the best. They see them as a nuisance. They see them as basically like deer or other things. And I love horses. I've said this before. Um, any book that like really deals with um, animals in a special way really speaks to me because I don't see a ton of those books done well. And yeah, this wasn't my favorite, but it was good. Um, and yeah, so this was Thief of Happy Endings by um, Kristen Chandler. Then um, I finally picked up a Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. Um, I was in Alexandria, Minnesota, and they have two little bookstores. And one of the bookstores, um, they didn't have a lot to choose from. But this is a book that I've been wanting to buy. And I was like, now's as good a time as any. Support this little town bookshop. So I picked this up. Um, all I know about this is there's like alternate realities. And there's one person who's able to go between the different versions of reality and there's magic and no I know more about it but I'm sure you've heard more about it yourself and I don't want to dive into it I'm excited to read it hopefully it'll be on my TBR soon because um, I know this trilogy a lot of people love it both women and men so I'm excited I really like kind of like the minimalist cover of it too then also at that bookstore, I picked up Scythe by Neil Schusterman. I've heard such great things about this series. Um, happy to finally like get into it. I think it's it's the arc of the Scythe is the series. Maybe it'll be more than a trilogy. That'd be cool. Um, but yeah, this I know has to do with like we have conquered death. So now the only way people die is if a reaper kills them. Or I mean, maybe they don't call them reapers. They call them, oh, they call them a scythe. And the only way people die is if a scythe kills you. And each scythe has their own way of how they decide who they kill. And so these two people, Citra and Rowan, they are apprenticed to a scythe. And they're learning how they themselves will kill people. Seems interesting. Again, I've seen this one around for a long time. And I've heard lots of people say good things. And it has an American Library Association reward on the front, so it must be decent. And, um, these two books I bought the same time I bought Illuminae. Um, they had this deal going on that it was buy two, get one free. So both of these are a bit older ones. This one is The Trickster's Choice by Tamara Pierce. I know this is part of um, a duology. I don't know anything else about it. I've never read any Tamara Pierce. Um, Tamara more Pierce. I've heard lots of good things, but I've never read them. So that was kind of the reasoning behind Illuminae, this one, and then I bought And I Darken by Kirsten White, is they were three that I've heard good things about, but I hadn't read them. So that's why I picked up all three of those on the buy two, get one, three at Barnes and Noble. Um, I loved Illuminae, obviously, as I keep saying. So I'm hoping these ones are just as good. Next, I have the three that I just picked up today, so I don't know too much about them. I'll start with this one. Um, right now, like, I was looking for another good epic fantasy, and I was trying to decide between Brandon Sanderson and this series by John Gwynn. Um, Pierre Ford is, like, finishing this series right now. Shout out to her. I love her videos, her awesome accent, and her adorable birds all the time. Anyway. I'm a fangirl for her. <laughs> and she said this was a super good series. So I picked up the first one, Malice. Um, I don't know any more about this than like what I read from her side. I know it has to do with an epic battle and it's a fantasy series. Hopefully I'll have more to tell you about it once I started. Um, epic fantasies are my fave. But it's hard to find one that's good enough to commit to because... Yeah, I mean, some of the epic series I've read is The Sword of Truth. That was 13 books, and then he added two more series after that. So there's a total of almost 20 novels you're committing to when you get involved. This one, as far as I know, um, the, Faith of, the Faithful and the Fallen series is four books, and then there is like a sequel book that's out. So I'm willing to give it a go. Then... Um, I bought a YA by Gwen Cole called Ride On. And again, I really love horse and cowboy stories and especially YA because there are not a lot of 
Western YAs that are like worth your time. You know what I mean? Um, that's one of the things I loved about Onyx and Ivory is it wasn't a Western, but like the horses were so important to the story. Um, but this one's called Ride On and it is from what I can tell set in post apocalyptic. So, you know, that type of life where things have gone so far and then they are reverting because of the post-apocalyptic life. And there is, let me look up the name. There is this young man named Seth who him and his horse are just living their lives day to day. He survives in the wild and he gets set upon by this gang of outlaws and somehow he gets accused of murder. And so he's on the run. Um, and then this girl, Avery, her brother gets kidnapped by that gang of outlaws. So her and Seth um, team up to clear Seth's name and rescue her brother from this gang. Um, it looks good. I've never read anything by Gwen Cole. It's kind of a short book, so that makes me nervous. That's another, <laughs> that's sometimes the problem with YA is they're too short. So hopefully it's a well put together story. I'm excited. The cover is beautiful. Let's see what it's naked. Oh, just a little plain, plain gray, but it seems really beautiful and I like that it's a poke apart poke, poke from her. I like that it's a post apocalyptic um, cowboy type thing. I like that. All right. The last one I got today, I don't know how to describe this. Um, a friend from work told me about this book. I'm going to open it. Told me about this book a year or so ago and I have, it, it was really expensive. So I, I kind of put off buying it. Um, but it's super cool. It comes in this cover and it's called S and it's by JJ Abrams and Doug Dorst. Um, and the way that this set up is these two college students find this book that was written by someone named VM Straka, which that's what this book is, is like, there's the book called S, but it's about reading this book called the ship of thesis by vm straka and apparently like inside the book there's like all these notes and these two people are like reading this book and they're like writing notes to each other in the margins and they're trying to figure out what happened to the writer because it was the last book vm straka it was the last book he wrote like look it even has like a fake library tag on it um and it just looks so cool she said it's this really cool experience um, but yeah, it looks beautiful. So I'll tell you more about it, see if it's good, but I'm definitely more open to different kinds of stories told now after reading Illuminae. Um, and this is gorgeous. So I hope the story is really good because this was really expensive and, um, you have to like open it to make it happen. So if it ends up not being good, you know, but it's really heavy. It's beautiful is this one is called the book of Joby and um it's by Mark J F Ferrari um it's supposed to be a retelling of the book of Job in the Bible um which if you're not familiar with the Bible um Job was supposed to be said to be one of God's most faithful servants and so the devil Lucifer said to God, he's only faithful because you've given him everything he could need. He has lots of children. He has a wonderful wife. He has land and servants and riches and all these things. And he's like, if he didn't have those things, he wouldn't be a faithful servant of yours. So God says, that's not true. His heart is good. I give you my permission to test him and prove me right. So the book of Job in the Bible is all about the test that, um, God allows Lucifer to do to Job. Um, and then I, I saw this in a thrift store that it was a retelling of the book of Job. And I thought, that's a great book to retell. <laughs> that would be really interesting. So I picked it up. It's by Tor Fantasy and I usually have good luck with them. Don't know if this will be any good, but do we ever know if they'll really be good? No. So I'm going to give it a try. I also picked up, which I have been wanting this book for a long time. Um, it is Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. I love some C.S. Lewis. I have to read him very slowly and a little bit at a time, but he's a very wise man. Um, and so this is supposed to be um, a breakdown of the Christian faith and like what it, what it means. Um, and it's how he explains and defends the belief in Christ. So 
Um, this will be one of my study books. This isn't going on a TBR or anything. It's just um, when I want to do some learning and read the words of a really wise man, I take a look at this. Then I picked up The Conspiracy of Us by Maggie Hall. I don't know anything about this. It was at the um, thrift store for a dollar. I love the cover. Um, apparently it has to do with um, Avery West and she's found out that her family is part of this conspiracy and it could destroy her life if she lets it. I don't know. Looks pretty. And I picked up Icons and Idols by Margaret Stoll. Um, apparently this has to do with um, your heart can be stopped by, I don't know if it's like the government or if it's just whatever, I don't know. I also, after I bought this, found out that there is maybe supposed to be a third book, but it's never, like, it hasn't been started yet or anything been said. So I'm a little nervous that I just bought these two books and that it will have a bad ending, but I don't know. I'm willing to give it a try. They looked cool, and they were each only a dollar, so I thought, why not? And now, my favorite find... Um, I'm so excited to show you guys this. I found this at the thrift store by my house or the, it's called books at a fifth. So it's like a fifth of the normal price of books. Um, this novel I'm about to show you is my mom's favorite book. Um, she tried to get me to read it when I was younger, but I just wasn't interested at the time. But when I was at the thrift store, I saw this, um, and I was like, I have to get it. It was only $6.00. And it's a first edition <laughs> and it's even in like it's it's called the clan of the cave bear by Jean M all and it's hard to see because it's shiny um, but this is the first in the Earth's children series and again it was my mom's favorite book she doesn't care so much about first editions and stuff like she has the whole series and she doesn't care um, but it even is in like wrapped plastic and stuff and it's a first edition and here's the cover. This is was written in like 1985 originally. So it's not like it's super old, but to find a first edition of this book, I checked um, what their current printing is on and they're on like the 90th printing. So to find a first edition is super cool. I don't know if that's something you ever look at, but um, with some of my favorite books, I really like to see like what printing that it's at just because it's one of the fun nerdy things like the sword of truth series i have first editions for the first six books that i've found at thrift stores like i haven't paid more than five bucks for any of them um but anyway i'll give you a little background on this this is a historical fiction um there's a romance in it from what i gather um but it's about this it's a saga of this girl named isla isla i think is how you say it and she so Obviously, it's Clan of the Cave Bear, so it, it's prehistoric people. And Isla is the first person born who's starting to look more Homo sapien sapien. So everyone else in her clan still looks, um, it still looks more like, I don't remember the term of who was before Homo sapien. Sorry, I'm not into that. But she's the one who's first looking the most like human like us. So she's considered really weak and ugly when really to us she would be really beautiful because she looks like us. Whereas they are more hairy still and like bigger foreheads and all that stuff. And so she's considered the least of her clan. And so she's treated really poorly. Um, this is all the setup for this series. I believe there's six books in the Earth's Children. And she's treated really poorly and gets married off to this like horrible guy who just abuses her and is cruel to her. Um, and so she ends up like running away from that family and finding other people who are starting to look more like her as well and eventually, you know, find someone to love her for who she is. But um, I'm really excited to read this. This is such a beautiful copy. I love old books. And it was just such a special find to find my mom's favorite book in such a beautiful edition. And maybe I'll finally read it now because, you know, we all we all love to have those things to share. But I also know, you know, back when I was really interested in it, she was like, I think you're a little too young to read this. And I was like, oh, mom, I'm glad you worry so much. But <laughs> So, I don't know. Well, that's enough yakking. Thank you for checking out my humongous book haul. Guys, you'd think I didn't need to eat or anything. How many books I'm buying? It's insane. <laughs>
But thank you as always for coming by and spending a little bit of time with me here at The Refuge. Love y'all. Bye.